In this video I want to review block and inline elements for a web page. So I've got a, bl uh, a blank page set up at the moment and we know it's blank because there's nothing in the body section. And I want to go ahead and put in a few common elements. Now there's two basic categories of elements, block and headline. So I'm going to just go ahead and start off with this. So this is a basic headline level of one. Of course, there are six different levels of headlines, and you can format all of them with CSS. Block and inline elements, and I'll create a headline too. So now I have three block elements on my web page. I've got a headline level one. I've got a headline level two, and then I've got a paragraph. Now all three of these block elements will separate themselves from each other. Basically they're going to be kind of in their own areas. And one of the best ways to kind of visualize what I'm talking about is to, in the HTML, put two elements side by side. For instance, right now I've got a headline one and a headline two side by side. But if I look at this on my browser, we can see that my headline one is on a different line than my headline two. Block elements separate themselves from the surrounding content. That's different than inline elements. For instance, watch this. If I put two inline elements side by side, so around the word block, I'll put in a set of emphasis tags. And around the word elements, I'll put in a set of strong tags. So emphasis and strong are both inline elements, and I've got them side by side, similar to way, the way I have headline one and headline two side by side. And in my browser, of course, my headline one and headline two are still in separate lines, but notice my emphasized text and my strong text are still side by side. Inline elements remain in line. There we go, perfect example. Inline is still within the line. So there are a lot of inline elements that we use all the time. So let me go ahead and take out these block or sorry, take out these emphasis and strong inline elements. And let's put in another inline element that we use constantly, the anchor tag to create a hyperlink. There we go. So I've surrounded the text block elements with an opening and closing set of anchor tags, just going to a no link. And of course, on my page, my anchor or my hyperlink is in line. Now, where this comes, where this affects uh, a you know beginner web designer, is making sure that you put inline elements inside of block elements, but not the opposite. Block elements can contain inline elements, but inline elements cannot contain block elements. and I want to italicize this entire paragraph. Now, one way to go about it, and this will be the wrong way, I'll do the wrong way first, would be to enclose the entire paragraph in a set of emphasized tags. And the beginner web designer is saying, fantastic, my paragraph has been emphasized, but this is invalid syntax. You can't have an inline element surrounding a block element, so this would be an invalid way to do this. So instead, you want those emphasis tags to be inside of the paragraph tags. This little switch is going to give us the exact same result, but it's going to be done in a valid way. Unordered lists and ordered lists are popular block elements. List items are popular block elements. If you wanted to create a bulleted list of hyperlinks, then your anchor tag needs to go inside of the list item. List item is block, anchors are inline, anchors go inside of a list item. 
Let's say at another point on your page you want to have a picture. A picture is inserted using an inline element, the image tag. There we go, so I've got an image inserted and my image shows up on the page. And at first, hey, this is great, this is exactly what I wanted. However, image is an inline element and it must be enclosed within a block element. You could enclose an image in all kinds of block elements. List item tags, TD tags, table data tags for a table cell, headline tags, paragraph tags. But if your goal was simply to put an image up there, you can use a generic block element called div, which is perfect for this purpose. So now my image is encased within a block element called div. Image still displays as I want it, but I'm using a block element to contain the inline element. So the toughest part of do doing this is really just keeping track of what are all the block elements and what are the inline elements. And obviously there's lists out on the web that we can go and check out. Or you can simply do a quick test and you'll start to memorize them as you use them. Block elements, though, include div, paragraph, headlines, unordered and ordered lists, list items, form, field set. Popular inline elements are image, anchors, emphasis, strong. Things that you could format simply text within a paragraph, those are inline elements. Things that would contain text or images would be block elements.